Welcome back! The women's physical testing is going on, so hopefully the locker room will be empty now. So we can see if that missing packet of cocaine has ended up in Pat's locker. Where the heck you going, Sarge? This here's the ladies' room. Men's is right next door. Oh, great. Now maybe the locker room is empty and the janitor is gonna keep us from uh, going inside. That's just brilliant. Well, we have to find a way to get rid of him. And what better way to get rid of a janitor than to create a mess somewhere? Now if we go into the men's locker room, we can see that uh, there's something here that wasn't there before, namely the toilet paper. And we can use that to clog up the toilet. You unroll all of the two-ply toilet paper, creating a big wad. Yet in your inventory it just looks like it's still on the roll, but anyway. You toss the wad of paper into the toilet and flush it. The toilet complains loudly and starts to overflow. Just your regular old run-of-the-mill John, except it's overflowing, but apparently the game doesn't want to comment on that. Okay, well, let's go tell the uh, janitor that the toilet is overflowing. Hopefully that will get rid of him so we can get into the women's locker room. Why we couldn't just tell somebody we're investigating Pat, I don't know. Mr. Stump, the toilet in the men's locker room is overflowing. Only any cold stumps? Think maybe you can take care of that for me? It's a real mess. Well, I sure can. Heck, I'll get right on it, Sarge. And he lumbers on over there. And now we ought to be able to get into the women's locker room, if indeed it's empty. And indeed it is. And it looks exactly the same as the men's locker room, except mirrored. That's a disappointment. They could have at least made it pink or something. This is the women's locker room, hence the lockers. Um, which one is Pat's, though? Not that one, not that one. That's Pat Morales' locker. Bingo. What's his name-o? And the combination should be 386, if indeed the number on the note was her combination. And it seems it was. What do we have here? Unbelievable! It looks like Morales has been stealing packets of cocaine. Can we take them? You'd better leave the cocaine here. If it were missing, Morales would get suspicious. Okay, we'll leave it there. But I guess we'd better uh, tell somebody uh, about that. Like the captain. And ask him for a different partner. I don't want this one anymore. Well, let's hope the captain is in the office, so we can tell him. The only problem I have with this subplot of the game, by the way, is that... 
there's a couple of things you need to do, like copying the key before you really have good grounds for believing that Pat is up to something. Okay. Anyway, I happen to know that this text box is going to go way too quickly, so <laughs> I'm uh, pausing it. Captain, I have reason to believe that my partner, Morils, has stolen some of the evidence from the Rockling case. There were five bags of cocaine removed from the accident scene, but only four were checked in as evidence. I'm also beginning to suspect that she may be in league with this cult. Alright, Bonds, I'll have the Internal Affairs boys check it out and keep an eye on her. Play it straight, but be careful. What, you mean I have to stay with her? She's still my partner? Okay, well, I guess we'll have to be careful then. I have to wonder, though, what evidence Sonny thinks he has for her being in league with this cult. The only thing we've really seen that could suggest that is the fact that she went uh, to the back of the bar and didn't notice that Rocklin was there. Other than that, that really sort of comes out of nowhere. Okay, um, well, before this whole mess, the captain said we um, had to go to the corner. So I guess we'd better do that. We haven't been there before. It is a new location for us to visit. There comes Pat. Act natural. Act natural. Don't say anything. Hi, Pat. Been stealing any cocaine today? Damn it! Shouldn't have said anything. Okay, I guess Sunny isn't that stupid. Um, the coroner, then, is on 8th Street between Fig and Peach. So that's over there. So we have to turn left here. And drive up to 8th Street. It's pretty close to the court, actually, which is uh, also on 8th Street. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a few times too many. Uh... The court is here, actually. And the corner is on the next block. There's the corner. So let's get out. And go inside. I guess it's this building. This building houses the county coroner's office. There's a fire hydrant on the sidewalk. Like all county buildings, the sidewalks are kept clean and tidy. The tree looks lonely amid all that brick and concrete. Okay. Let's just go inside. Okay, looks like Leon isn't here right now. The sight of the cold, stainless steel autopsy table sends a chill through your spine, as you recall the many times you've come close to ending up on one. Indeed. The drawers store bodies. You wonder if there's anyone you know in there. Like Steve Rocklin. Leon certainly has a lot of storage space in here. You'd rather not look at that chart on the wall. You see enough of that stuff at accident scenes. Ooh, a skeleton. That's Leon's girlfriend, Demi Bones. Ha ha ha. 
The bottles contain embalming fluid. It looks like there's an envelope on the counter here. There's a large manila envelope on the counter. And... I guess we should take that. If it's meant for us. We'll take a look at it in the next video.